Hey friends, my name is Adam and welcome to the lab. Today we're going to take a look at some Discord malware or basically a Discord credential stealer. Let me go ahead and throw a disclaimer out there. I am not a reverse engineer, nor am I a malware analyst. This came across my path because a friend of mine was researching it and inadvertently infected his machine. So these files are dangerous. They can cost you your account. I am running Windows 10, which we see on the left here within a virtual machine itself. So this is a virtual machine within a virtual machine. And off to the right is Kali Linux and to the lower right is Wireshark watching the incoming and outgoing traffic. With that out of the way, we'll go ahead and take a look. I believe I've already transferred the files over to this machine. I have not. Okay, so let's go ahead and move these files over. So I won't be providing any information on where I got these files from as they're still infecting people and I don't want to help further that spread. What we'll do from here is we'll go ahead and open virus total. And while the file is still zipped. We'll see it's showing zero out of 61. It's not being detected by anything in virus total. So if we go ahead and unzip or unrar, we go back, we'll open another virus total. This time we're going to pull the spacers exe. So now we can see we're showing 8 out of 71, but there's something else you should take note here. The file itself is called spacers exe, but if we look right here, now we're seeing updater exe. And then we see Avas, Kaspersky, Avas, Kaspersky are recognizing it as a Trojan. So one of the things I did was I went ahead and ran this through Notepad++. So if we go to the desktop and then back to spacers. So as you can see here, it's still encoded, but if we go towards the bottom, we can start seeing some of the clear text code. So here's some of the clear text. For like make directory, some internal calls. But we go towards the very bottom This is what stood out to me was these two calls right here. This one and this one. So we see it creating a snapshot directory, this directory, and then index.js. And then if we go over here, We can see it's running a command. It's running a command and then it's running PowerShell commands. So here's our command and then PowerShell. Now I haven't been able to determine exactly what those commands do. I've gone back and looked at the videos. It looks like they try to create paths and then they fail out but I haven't fully determined where it's sending to or what it's calling out to when it runs those other than maybe making a directory. So I've gone ahead and disabled Discord from starting up 
on reboot. So if we take a look here, this is what's currently set. I looked into update and this GitHub, this is Discord basically reaching out to update. So this is normal. Basically when you go to sign into Discord and you see it saying updating, this is that call out right there. So this is all we're showing here. Now, if we look at some typical startup folders, this one's empty. So these folders I'm looking at are commonly indicators of compromise. This one's empty. That one's normal. And this one's normal. Let me bring this over and I'll show you exactly the folders I'm looking at. So these are the folders I just listed off. Now, if you're wondering about this right here, this is a variable that lets the computer determine the username you're automatically on. So you don't have to type in the username. So go ahead and get that out of the way again. And then let's run process hacker. So what this is doing is it's showing us all the processes that are running in the background. So if we take a look, for example, Explorer is going to be what we're going to look at here. So we can see process hackers running, Notepad, Notepad++, Edge, OneDrive, VM tools, and so on which is all down here. So these are all normal processes running. These are all processes I've either triggered or that are system triggered automatically. So let's go ahead and run this game and see what happens. Okay, black screen, nothing happens. But now we can see that Spacers EXE has called conhost. And if we go to system tray, nothing's showing here. Let's attempt to launch Discord. Again, I don't have a Discord account set up. I just want to trigger Discord. So we can see the incoming and outgoing requests. Okay. So let's check those directories that we just looked at. Nothing there. That not cut oh, I hit the wrong thing. So updater EXEs installed itself to startup. And now we have spacers EXE with con host and then a child command with another child PowerShell running in the background. Then another command and then another PowerShell running in the background. These have all been triggered by themselves. Everything's normal there. And everything's normal there. So what's interesting is when I spoke to my friend about the infection he dealt with or having his Discord account stolen, he stated that it did not kick him out of Discord or log him out. After he had ran the file about 30 minutes later, 
he noticed that there were several purchases for Discord subscriptions. From what I can gather, this means that it somehow has gathered local cached credentials and then sent those off to the command center or the person who is running this specific credential stealing server. Now, I haven't been able to figure out exactly what these PowerShell commands are doing, but we can see they're just running in the background doing their own thing. So let's go ahead and restart. And let's see real quick. Okay, let's go ahead and close this down. Don't need that. And then we'll go ahead and restart. Okay, so on this restart, we'll take a look at what happens next. Let's see if we can get Process Hacker up in time. So Process Hacker is the only thing running. Here's our standard tools that are loading in. Now here's that updater EXE running itself. That's because it was still in the startup folder. So now it's silently sitting in the background. So we launched Discord. We saw update exe run. That's the Discord GitHub callout. This is all normal. This most likely won't connect. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so if we go back and take a look at our startup apps. And we'll keep an eye on this. So there's it calling the command, the PowerShell, and then the PowerShell as well. So from what I'm able to tell is this doesn't hold on like a virus does. This seems to be just a program sitting in the background running, stealing the credentials. So I believe it's easy to uninstall if you happen to see this sitting in your system tray or your um, processes. So if we go ahead and just turn off updater, and then we're going to go ahead and open file location. We're going to remove that out of startup. And then what I want to do is I want to check those same five areas we checked before. there. No changes there. This I believe is where we just moved it out of the startup. Yes. And then this one. Nothing there. And nothing there. So while this is running in the background, we can go ahead and terminate the process. Let's just go ahead and terminate that entirely. And then let's see if it starts itself back up. We'll give it a minute. 
And what we can do is we'll go ahead and relaunch Discord. And it's no longer running, even though Discord's been launched. Now let's go ahead and verify. We've turned that off. We've removed it from the startup. Let's go ahead and restart one more time. Okay, let's bring Process Hacker back up. So here's Explorer loading in everything. And we see no updater or spacer exe running in the background. So I believe that's the easiest way you can uninstall this is basically you find those locations, delete them from your computer, restart, make sure they're not starting back up. The other way to mitigate this or keep it from happening, say your credentials do get stolen and you need to log out your Discord account, make sure you have two-factor authentication enabled as well as your backup codes if your two-factor has been compromised itself you can use your backup codes to bypass the two-factor authentication otherwise you're most likely going to lose your discord account so in closing make sure you have two-factor authentication on discord enabled you have your backup codes saved and don't download any files, even if they're from your friends, especially if you suspect something's a little off about them. And I'm going to leave that here. This is as far as I can go. Again, I'm not a malware analyst, nor am I a reverse engineer. I'm just somebody with some curiosity and wanted to show what I came across. If you found this interesting, let me know. If you disliked it, let me know. If there's something you saw I could do better or a uh, software or a program you think would help in my research, please let me know. Anyways, I'm Adam. I appreciate you watching. And until next time, I'll see you in the next one.